This is the story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. He was not faster or stronger or more clever than other children. And though his family was terribly poor, Charlie was the luckiest boy in the world. <laughs> he just didn't know it yet. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. No one's been in or out for years. Not since he closed it up and sent us all home. I know, Grandpa Joe. I wish we could see inside. And the world wished along with him. Then one day came an unexpected proclamation. Dear people of the world, I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children to visit my factory. Five golden tickets have been hidden beneath the wrappers of five ordinary Wonka bars. Each of the finders will be shown around the factory personally by me. In addition, one of these children will receive a special prize beyond anything you could ever imagine. Beyond anything you could ever imagine. But I haven't any money for chocolate. Nothing's impossible, Charlie. Nothing. The first golden ticket was found by a gluttonous boy named Augustus Gloop. I'm eating the Wonka bar, but I taste the ticket. The second by a spoiled little girl named Veruca Sword. Daddy, I want a golden ticket now. The third was found by Violet Beauregard, an arrogant gum-chewing champion. The winner of that special prize is going to be me. And the fourth golden ticket was found by an ill-mannered genius named Mike TV. I calculated just where to look. An idiot can do it. Charlie's dream of exploring the Wonka factory was fast slipping away. When fate intervened. Ten dollars! Nothing's impossible, Charlie. Oh no! No! At that moment, Charlie felt rich, but more than that, he felt terribly hungry. Ten dollars was enough to feed his entire family for a week. So after careful consideration, Charlie decided to spend just one dollar of it on himself. One one quick scrumptious fudge man a delight, please. Hungrily, Charlie pulled back the wrapper and took his first bite. Then pulling it back for another bite was one small corner of shiny paper. A golden ticket, the very last one in the entire world, and Charlie had found it. Greetings to you. to you. The lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. Charlie carried the ticket home to show his family as quick as his little legs could carry him. And the very next day, Charlie, Grandpa Joe, and the other four ticket holders gathered at the gates of the chocolate factory exactly as each ticket had instructed. And they all had big plans for when they got inside. I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. I will devour every one of the chocolates and candies and things of this nature. I'm going to look for things I want my daddy to get me. I'm going to be bored. You think Wonka's got any video games in there? Do you think Mr. Wonka will recognize you? Hard to say. It's been years since I worked for him. And exactly at the appointed time, the factory gate, closed for so long, finally opened. And there stood Willy Wonka himself. Dear visitors, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to my humble factory. Now quickly, we mustn't dawdle. There's far too much to see. With little time and lots to see, the tour began. And they were whisked away 
to the very heart of the Wonka factory. The chocolate room. It's beautiful. What's more, it's all edible. And it was. For every single thing around them was made of candy, even down to the green grass on the banks of his chocolate river. I'm in heaven! I bet. I want a chocolate room. I want two. The last one to the river bank's a rotten egg. Every drop of that river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. Waterfall is most important. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall. When Augustus Bloom heard that, he was determined to drink his fill. Just one zip? No, two zips. But even that proved too little for Augustus. Please, boy, please. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Leaning out to guzzle the chocolate, the gluttonous boy lost his balance and fell right in. And in moments, he was drawn into an enormous chocolate pipe where he stuck fast. Help me! It's not big enough. I'll say. Not much of a swimmer, was he? Someone should do something. We must continue. There's so much to see in too little time. But you can't leave him there. Eventually he'll come out. The pressure will get to him, you know. And yet... If Augustus were freed earlier, the river could be cleaned quicker and production would continue sooner. And since the other children had not shown an interest in helping Augustus, Wonka left the task to Charlie. Be about your work then, and rejoin the tour when you can. I'll be able to check back with you at a moment's notice though, so don't be surprised to see me. Charlie agreed to stay behind. But as for how to get Augustus Bloop unstuck from the pipe, Charlie was about to find he would have more help Unexpected. I hope the Loompas will help you remove that greedy boy from my chocolate. Quickly now. forever. If the portly boy can't free himself, we have no other choice. We'll have to blow him out. Hurry now, to the bellows! Marvelous! Your chocolate shouldn't taste as good to you. You look exhausted. Try some more to bite. It's full of energy to keep you on your toes. You'll often find it in trees. How can one child, even such a large one, cause so many problems? I never caused problems when I was a child. I waited till I was a grown-up. Look what he's doing to my jelly bean stock. It's wilting. There he goes. My jelly bean stock is starting to look a little better now. better. I do believe you've almost done it. Woohoo! Brilliant! And my jelly bean stock is coming back to life. But we mustn't dawdle. By now the blockage has probably reached the Wriggle Sweets room. Hurry, no time. As Charlie worked at dislodging Augustus group from the factory plumbing, Mike TV was giving Mr. Wonka an earful on the benefits of automation. If this were my factory, I'd fire the little creeps and upgrade these lame robots instead. Mr. Wonka, for his part, had no intentions of changing a thing. Mumbling, always with the mumbling. For all the elements of his factory worked together in harmony exactly as he meant them to until Mike took matters into his own hands. So certain of his superior intellect, Mike decided to upgrade the Wonkabots himself. But these weren't ordinary robots, they were Wonkabots. 
to prove unlike anything my TV had ever tampered with, and quite beyond even his considerable intellect. So when the tampering backfired, Mike didn't tell a soul. Instead, he pretended nothing had happened at all. Keep moving, please. Mustn't dawdle. But something had happened, and for Charlie and the Oompa Loompas, things were about to get much worse. Not again! Now that Bavarian bully is backing up the entire candy flow. Corpulent child, I can't have him ruining everything like this. See if you and the Oompa Loompas can do something about it. Things are working much better now, except those Wonka bots seem a little irritated, don't they? Ooh, look here. The fruits of your labor. Wriggle sweets. Quite tasty, and they have more uses than one. My chocolate river. It's completely dried up. That rotund boy has done it again. He's come full circle, and now he's plugged up the chocolate waterfall. This is not acceptable. That's everything. This candy is one of my earliest and most successful inventions. Yes, he's out of the pipes. No, he's back in the river. This is Storeroom 59, where I store some of my inventions from the inventing room that I don't have room for. Feel free to try your hand at working some of the machines yourself. If you want to revisit rooms where ingredients are found, you must find their great glass elevator buttons first. Having rescued Augustus' group from the Chocolate River, and finally caught up to Mr. Wonka and the rest of the kids, Charlie found them faced with a peculiar dilemma. I would rather you didn't. I'm the world record holder in chewing gum. I'm not afraid of anything. For despite Mr. Wonka's protests, Violet had sampled one of his new inventions. A stick of gum that was a whole three-course dinner all by itself. It's amazing. Tomato soup. I can feel it running down my throat. It's changing. Roast beef, baked potato, with crispy skin and butter. I've tried it on 20 Oompa Loompas, and it always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. It's the blueberry pie that does it. She's swelling up. Ha, look at her go. 
I don't want a piece of that candy. Indeed, Val was becoming rounder and more blue by the moment and showed no sign of stopping. Mm, I don't feel so good. Seeing that Charlie had returned from rescuing Augustus Loop, Mr. Wonka thought nothing of asking him for another favor. We've got to squeeze the juice out of her immediately. This time, requesting that Charlie roll the foolish girl to the juicing room. Don't worry, we've had lots of practice with this. Where she could be restored to her former miserable state. Will Violet always be a blueberry? No, maybe. I don't know. But that's what you get from chewing gum all day. It's just disgusting. Taken to the juicing room before she can do any more damage. Work with my Oompa Loompas and you should be able to rejoin the group in no time. should have created the perfect piece of... Wonderful! You fixed the great gum machine! Hopefully that means we won't have any Oompa Loompas turning into blueberries anymore. But it still might need some testing. do it, never had a doubt. Except for the part with the pipes, and the spinners, and that one Oompa Loompa. Did you get his name? Anyways, hurry along. Violet isn't getting any smaller. Having delivered the now fully juiced Violet Beauregard, Charlie rejoined the others just in time to tour Mr. Wonka's fantastic nut room. Oompa Loompas can't get walnuts out of their shells in one piece. Working feverishly among the gravity-fed pipes and chutes were neither Oompa Loompas nor Wonka Butts. Nobody can get whole walnuts out every time, except squirrels. Who better to sort good nuts from bad? Now, Baruka sold had many pets, but she did not have a squirrel. All I've got at home is two dogs, and four cats, and six rabbits, and three canaries, and a green parrot, and a turtle, and a bowl of goldfish, and a silly old hamster. Give me a squirrel. I want a squirrel. They're not for sale. And when she decided to grab one and take it home... Little girl, I wouldn't. The squirrels were not amused. In fact, they seemed most upset by it. <laughs> Leaping on top of her, they knocked Veruca to the ground, rapping furiously on her head with her tiny knuckles. What are they doing? They're testing to see if she's a bad nut. I wonder. Satisfied that she was most certainly not a good nut, the squirrels dragged Veruca away. Where are they taking her? Where all the other bad nuts go, down the garbage chute. This time, Charlie knew what Mr. Wonka was going to ask him even before he said it. So he set out straight away to retrieve the greedy girl. And the group, what was left of it, continued on without him. Ah, 
my squirrels. What must they be thinking? As for that spoiled girl, lucky for her they only use the incinerator on Tuesdays. Wait, what's today? Sorting nuts just like nothing ever happened. Now there's just the matter of the garbage chute and that bratty girl who fell down it, and the incinerator. Don't let her get away, Charlie. You'll have to go faster to get past those doors, and to avoid any foul-smelling garbage you encounter, rotten cabbages, burnt toast, and that sort of thing. Some of them must have escaped in all the confusion. Look what they've done to my fizzy lifting machine. This is all wrong. You must help fix it. With no fizz, there won't be any lift. The conveyor isn't working. That panel up there looks like it needs repair. Get a welder oompa loompa up there and fix it. Oh, and I guess you'll need this. If it's not the children, it's the squirrels. Not the squirrels, it's the Wonkabots. See what you can do to repair things around here, but carefully. This is the exploding candy room. When Charlie caught up with Mr. Wonka again, the tour, now down to only one other golden ticket winner, had stopped at the testing room for his latest and greatest invention, television chocolate. Put these on quick and don't take them off. This light could blind you. Mr. Wonka had invented a way of sending a delicious bar of actual chocolate over the airway allowing ordinary television viewers to take it and eat it right out of the screen. That's impossible! And the power you'd need would be like nine atomic bombs. But even when Mr. Wonka's invention proved that the impossible was indeed possible. Holy buckets! And it works just so with virtually every kind of chocolate. That wasn't enough for Mike TV. Don't Realize what you've invented? It's the most important invention in the history of the world. It's a teleporter, you idiot. No, 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 no. Quick, the television. I just hope that no part of him gets left behind. Sometimes only half the little pieces find their way through. And as they watched the screen, Charlie had a sneaking suspicion that his services would be required once more. Good. Without full power to the machine, who knows where that horrid boy might show up. A sitcom, a six o'clock news, even a cat food commercial. See what you can do, won't you, boy?
Charlie's efforts proved successful, and all were relieved to see Mike TV emerge in one piece. Wonderful. He's completely unharmed. Though a good deal smaller than he was before. Told you I was right. And just put me back to the other way! But there is no other way. It's television, not telephone. The miniature Mike TV was escorted to the Taffy Puller for stretching. Meanwhile, Mr. Wonka was eager to resume his factory tour. There's still a lot to see. Now, how many children are left? Just me, Mr. Wonka. Excellent. First things first, let's check on our other guests. And before Charlie could speak, he was whisked off to the factory entrance. I do hope they've learned something today. I invited five children to this factory, but I had a hunch it would be you, Charlie, right from the very beginning. Quickly now, there's more to do. And before he knew it, Charlie found himself in the great glass elevator once more, where he noticed a label etched in the glass, one he had not seen before. Up and out? What kind of a room is that? You can choose to see for yourself, but there's still some ingredients I need. Which could only mean that Charlie's adventure was not quite over yet. Go ahead, press it. I suddenly realized I can't go on forever. Who will continue my life's work? Your factory. It's yours now, Charlie. Mine? But... I told you, beyond anything you could ever imagine. Truly nothing was impossible. Just as Grandpa Joe had said. And as Charlie's mind whirled in the wonder and excitement of that day, there was one thing of which he was absolutely certain. Life had never been sweeter. Thank you.